There were once four teams who all sought out peace, but war has never been that simple, has it? These previously sovereign nations abolished all allyships and battled until there was only one name remaining. Okay, so I'm distracting them so you can come airstrike their whole base. Which resulted in a new world ruled by the Blue Tigers. A nation led by Dot Colin, Volpixie, and yours truly. Eventually, all three nations were fully rebuilt and it was suddenly time for these three soldiers to challenge a vengeful world in a game of Fortnite Bed Wars. The rules are simple. If any of the teams break through a base and destroy a bed, the defeated team then loses the ability to respawn until they ultimately succumb to death's cold embrace. This is a story of war, a story of politics, but ultimately, the legend of how the Blue Tigers defended against three entire nations who were set out for revenge. When the first shot was fired, my team quickly started preparing for the enemies from all directions by constructing a labyrinth of a fortress. But the neighboring yellow mosquitoes had very different plans. Like the name suggests, their gameplay was repetitive, annoying, and ultimately centered around avoiding what was strong, yet striking at what was weak. All Tribe, Bobby, and Josh immediately went on a blood-sucking offense in hopes of striking tiger territory while we were weak. I know what we need to stop them, okay? Yeah. What do we need? We need a sea shanty. Colin, my ally, attempted to approach the mosquitoes with a friendly demeanor, as they were previously the least hostile nation. But the proposal of peace accompanied by a weapon was not one that they were interested in, and I let it serve as a grim reminder that in war... Oh my god. Okay, so they cannot be reasoned with anymore. There are truly no heroes. Only victors who get to claim that they've been heroes all along. So in preparation of oncoming attacks, I developed a trap to hopefully fool any opponent invading through blind panic. Given the lay of the land, the nations we were most worried about were surprisingly not the mosquitoes, but rather the land of the red lions. Like the name suggests, the nation was stacked with the most prideful warriors imaginable. Fur, Virus, and even Rickles. Three warriors decorated with a multitude of accolades across the history of Fortnite Bed Wars. Okay, I low-key just like, their bed is open for some reason, so I'm just like slowly shooting at it. But I guess none of this would have even been possible if not for today's sponsor, Dragon City. Not just a beacon of hope to make my wildest Bed Wars dreams come true, but it's also a game where you can collect, hatch, and evolve over 1,000 unique dragons. On top of that, you can customize your dream city with magical habitats, buildings, and even decorations. Sure, you can engage in exciting PvP battles, but you can also conquer challenging quests like the Wizard's Hollow. Beyond all that, you can join an ever-growing community of players, trade with each other, and even unlock exclusive rewards. So, if you're watching this, be sure to give it a chance. Download Dragon City today by clicking the link in the description or by scanning the QR code. This one, th th this one, it's been on screen, it's on screen, it's huge. And <laughs> if you do it, you get a special bundle with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the very rare Neozumi dragon to get you started. Yep. Yeah. This QR code, by the way. <clears throat> Anyways, back to psychological warfare. Lucky for us, though, their base was poorly constructed and allowed for multiple snipers from different teams to fire in some cheap shots towards their bed and slowly lowered its health. But of course, all warfare is based on deception, right? The Lions were willing to take a few hits to feign weakness because, for them, there were only two methods of attack, the direct and the indirect. Well, someone's here. Where? The vent. It's fur. As far as the lions were concerned, the battle was merely just beginning as one rushed our bed in hopes of exchanging their life for just a bit of damage. Like, we have too much heat on us right now. Yeah, see, this is why I didn't want to win game one, you know? I inspected the path they dug to our base and on the other side was swiftly eliminated by another member of the red lions. Okay, they, they just started covering it up again. All right, I'll chill on them. Much like the yellow mosquitoes who returned to assist Red by pincering off our pathways. With someone always shooting down our base this early on, things felt quickly helpless. I just realized he's much more scared of me than I am of him. After Colin and I took out one of their agents, we decided to push this momentum a bit further as Pixie stayed back to protect our base from the oncoming lions. <laughs> you got Bobby, you got Bobby. <laughs> On our way back, we quickly compiled all of our material and created an entire maze of a base to confuse most oncoming attackers. But of course, they could always come from below. And so could we. 
To catch our enemies off guard, I then built an entirely separate path towards Alliance, only to be met with the cruel realization that this bridge goes both ways. <laughs> no, he hit Thanos in the gritty on me! So now, our team was officially struggling to find any kind of familiar footing as the Green Pythons emerged for the first time in this war. Aaron, Giwi, and Jome have been using this established and combined aggression towards us as their secret weapon. Their only mission was to farm as many resources and materials as they could possibly find, and their base showcased that goal as a clear success. I unknowingly struck first by removing a lone Morty from play before his death was immediately avenged by an oncoming strike from the Pythons. And with that, the Blue Tigers were officially now faced with three unique nations who all shared a common enemy, us. Some members from the Lion started to build onto my intended labyrinth in hopes of us getting lost in our own maze. Left side, first building a fuck ton. What the fuck is Fur doing? The mosquitoes were dedicated to breaking our base down one bullet at a time, and the pythons continued to scavenge for every piece of resource they could possibly find. We sat by and just let it happen, in hopes of achieving peace for the other teams as they could never forgive the blood of their comrades that we've already shed. Who's this Mr. Beast? I don't know who this one is. That's so rude. At this point, it was in our best interest to take what we can get, stock up on what matters, and simply attempt to defend ourselves from three teams with a shared goal. So fucking done with Rickles. He's so obnoxious. He literally just keeps coming back. Come back, Rickles, oh. go away. He, yeah, he, oh fuck. They weren't allied teams. Sure, they all wanted us dead, but they weren't technically unified. Given the locations of the red and yellow bases, they were the furthest away from each other. The Lions had by far the weakest base and were struggling to defend themselves simply out of convenience for a team that moved like blood-sucking mosquitoes. Even though our country had a target on our back, Thank you, Rickles. I found an opportunity to return the favor by dealing significant damage to their bed as well. Uh, they're letting me? They're just letting me? Uh, we take that. After that, the bloodline of the Red Lions was not long for this world. Despite this, their plan had not faltered in the slightest. In fact, nobody has even gotten close to abandoning their initial plan, so we stayed on the defense while the Mosquitoes continued to take any shot they could get. And as for the Pythons, well, they spent their days in a state of fearful preparation from the other nations. Then, I remembered. We didn't become public enemy number one for nothing. In this current world, the yellow mosquitoes were still shooting down the red lions' weak base as their nation's lifeblood was running low. The green pythons were also joining in by taking a few pot shots, but that was really just out of geographical convenience. But they didn't know that. Hey, okay, so. team four. I think it's very clear team one and three have an alliance against us. Yeah. Okay, okay. Look, your bed's on life support. I say we team up against one and three. Shake. Okay. Yeah. Shake. Shake. To formally offer peace, I donate some gold to the Red Lions and personally volunteer to build them a stronger base with their stronghold of steel in hopes of preventing their neighboring mosquitoes from free shots at their quickly ticking hourglass. Look at what I've done. You, you guys like what I... Do they like your gift, your peace offering? Yeah, no, they did. They did. They told me. They, they actually hugged me for it. <gasps> oh. Looks yeah, well, really guys. Cute. They're yeah, not it was so nice, bad. Yeah, it was a nice moment. So now all we had to do was pick off the weaker nations while hoping that our allied partner might fall before we'd even have to do anything about it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, Mr. Fortnite, no! I, I think uh. they, they can tell that there was an ally ship here. The pythons were finally on the offense and snuck through the vents before their little infiltration was quickly squashed. Oh, fuck, someone's in our vent. Only for the persistent yellow team to strike alongside them with who else but All Might hiding in the vent. These two nations were never allied, but both definitely wanted us gone. So with our operations finally stabilized, it was time to go on the attack with a collection of secret paths, smoke bombs, and a goddamn dream. The previously untouched green team fell under the curse of panic. They searched through every corner of their base and inspected it with bullets through the smoke, and after it fell, it dawned on them that I was shredding nearly all of the bed's health. Sure, they ended up finding me, but that was only step one. Oh, wow, but you almost destroyed their bed. Oh, I'm down Keep here with it. the- Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! They couldn't find me! As Pixie protected our base once more, Colin and I set out to bring even the rivaling mosquitoes down to our level until the whole world was beaten, bruised, and bloody. Okay, I got I got I got clingers and shit. Alright, uh then you leave. Just don't smoke until these are all done, because I kinda get blinded. Suddenly, this war was becoming interesting. But more than that, 
it was becoming possible for us to come out on top. So, you have four nations, all damaged to different degrees, and now it was time to finally pull ahead. While all the teams were distracted, pointing fingers at each other, I went in and attacked the yellow bed, hopes of destroying it, yet through the clouds of smoke, their life source remained with only the slightest bit of health remaining. The seeds of disorder were already sown and busy brewing a beautiful cacophony before our very eyes. In the midst of chaos, there was also an opportunity for us as an enemy bed fell while an allied one joined them seconds later. So with six players now on their last life, it wasn't long until a few were killed for good and met an unfortunate end to their part in the war. While flags were being hung at half-mast, I was busy digging up gold and used my opportune positioning to sneak over to the final bed remaining. I wasn't planning on taking down the whole team with me, but sure enough, Another bed bit the dust, and so did one of its lone guardians. With three beds removed from play and a few desperate soldiers all still alive, it was time once more to protect our bed against the world. On my way back, I crossed paths with a member from our previous allyship, knowing that it was now time to take him out. But I couldn't bear to do it myself. So, I gave him one last hug, since the next time we'd meet, it would be as enemies. I trekked onwards to the base and didn't look back a single time, only for All Might to be the one to take out yet another former teammate. This beast was a one-man army, a thorn in my side, and above all else, he was a man with a mission. With all alliances off, our former ally of Doctor Strange summoned a Hail Mary of an airstrike before sacrificing his own life for a failed attempt at redemption. Sure, I held back my own bullets, but... My team wasn't as sentimental to see a previous ally on the opposite side of their pistol. At this point, our bed still had some health left, but there were only two stragglers left alive. We were shooting flares in the sky in hopes of finding the hiding survivors, but they were staying as close to the shadows as they could while waiting for a single opening. Whoever is the first in the field and awaits the coming of the enemy will be fresh for the fight. Whoever is second in the field will arrive exhausted, so we decided to wait for the final two rivals to make their move. One couldn't take the pressure at all and folded under the panic, while the last known survivor plotted, waited, and struck a fatal blow to our bed. He's in, he's in, he's in our bed, he's in our bed. That was it, that was it. All Might destroyed our life support and fled to the vents. With my team now on our last life, we were suddenly mortal. The only thing separating us from defeat was a fortunate opening from a blood-sucking mosquito. So I turned the final corner, knowing that one way or another, this battle was about to end. Get him, Jacob! Let's go! You got him? Deku oh killed All Might! Oh my goodness. Oh Deku my God. killed All Might! Oh. Let's go! Oh, oh, that was so close. The war oh. is finally over. And as far as our nation is concerned, we have finally found peace by eliminating all other nations. For this was a lesson in tactics, in politics, and in the art of war. So do not forget to be the one who subscribes for more. Sun Tzu.